Hello, everyone. I would like to start with a funny story. This is the story of three sisters, ages 92, 94, and 96, who live in the same house together. One night, the 96-year-old draws a bath. She puts on one foot in and pauses. She yells down the stairs, was I getting in or out of the bath? Then the 94-year-old 94, 94 yells back, I don't know. I'll come back, I'll, co I'll come up and see. She starts up the stairs and pauses. Then she yells out, was I going up the stairs or down? The 92-year-old is sitting at the kitchen table having tea and listening to her sisters. She shakes her head and says, I sure hope I never get that forgetful. She knocks on the wood for good measure. She then replies, I'll come up and help both of you as soon as I see who is in the door. So I thought that it was good to start my homily on a positive note. I think about all of you and pray for you constantly. How are you? This is an important question that we need to ask each other. I always appreciate when we share a meal as priests and Father Stephen asked the question, how are you? We priests need to ask ourselves that question. At the end of the day, we are in this situation together. We are here to support each other and to give our lives for this beautiful community the Lord has entrusted to us. Even though you and I are challenged by the current situation, we cannot become like the woman of the funny story who became forgetful of what they were doing. We cannot forget God's blessings, all the beauty we can see in people, and all the generosity and kindness of our neighbors, families, and friends. In today's Gospel, we see the journey of two disciples of Christ. Just like you and me, their journey is my journey. It is your journey, a journey of ups and downs. The journey began when they met Jesus. They had high expectations on him. They even thought, he was going to free them from the Roman Empire. They enjoyed listening to him, seeing him perform miracles, walking on water, raising the dead, and calming the storms. But the last memories they have of Jesus were not very encouraging. They saw him being taken by soldiers. He was ridiculed before the town, a town that did not approve of him. He was despised, scourged, and condemned to carry the cross. Finally, he was nailed on the same cross he carried. Is it funny to remember all of this? No. Does it make you want to run from the chaos and brutal memories of having a friend put to death? I do not blame them. No one wants to stay in Jerusalem. How many of us feel like running away from sorrow, pain, suffering, sickness? broken relationships, 
false expectations, family problems, or financial issues. You and I can identify with these two disciples who are going away from that place of death. The gospel mentioned that the disciples were on their way to Emmaus. According to scripture scholars, Emmaus is not possible to locate geographically, which makes them think that St. Luke was talking about Emmaus as an emotional state the disciples were experiencing. In other words, Emmaus for the disciples was a desire for happiness, a desire to escape from reality, a desire for wholeness. The disciples are on the way to forget all the terrible things that they had experienced. I can say that my emails these days have been going out for a run, making some comfort food, sewing with a sewing machine, cleaning my room, reading and praying. Anything that makes me leave reality for a second. That is emails and escape from reality. The gospel then tells us of very important and powerful good news you and I need to hear today. It is in this Emmaus where we encounter Jesus. It is okay to feel like we want to run away. It is okay to feel discouraged. It is okay to feel sad and downcast. But it is in the midst of these high emotional troubles where Jesus comes to find us. The gospel says that Jesus joined these two disciples on their Emmaus experience. However, they were not able to recognize him. They did not feel his presence. They even complained to Jesus about their own disappointments and all that happened in Jerusalem. They were so sad that their tears did not allow them to recognize that Jesus was present. As I said at the beginning, the journey of these two disciples is your journey on my journey. When things are painful, it is difficult to see Jesus. The lives of these disciples were shattered. But it was not until Jesus revealed himself in the breaking of the bread that the disciples felt his presence deep in their hearts. They felt the assurance that they will be okay. They regained their, their strength to go back to the reality, in this case, to Jerusalem. The reality did not have power over them. They learned that Jesus had the power to change that sadness and those sorrowful situations into joyful and faithful situations. Jesus gave, gave these disciples confidence in themselves, confidence in their mission, and confidence with their families and communities, within their families and communities. As the disciples, we may not recognize Jesus and we are frustrated or facing difficult challenges. But he is always journeying with us, giving us the strength to go back to Jerusalem, 
to face our fears, worries, and sufferings, and to reaffirm his presence. In a few minutes, we'll be breaking bread with Jesus. Jesus will make himself present in the breaking of the bread. He will assure us that we are not alone. When we do not feel his presence, do not listen to that feeling. Embrace Jesus as he comes to give us his strength and support. You are not alone. Jesus is risen. I invite you to allow yourself to receive Jesus by reciting the spiritual communion prayer during communion. With faith in the risen Lord that always accompany us on our journeys, we pray as we prayed in today's psalm. Lord, you will show me the path of life, abundant joy in your presence, the delights at your right hand forever. May the Lord strengthen us and give us the grace to persevere in prayer and faith. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.